hello everybody uh, today's uh, topic of discussion is uh, wired equivalent privacy that is nothing but web okay so the contents are uh, like this today we will discuss like uh, what is the introduction part then the encryption details then the third thing is uh, authentication and uh, the fourth thing is uh, difference between uh, uh, web open and web shared wide equivalent privacy that is nothing but web in short form we call it as web this is a security algorithm introduced by 802.11 wireless networks that is IEEE 802.11 wireless networks and uh, this is a uh, algorithm basically this is a security algorithm next point is uh, its intention was to provide data confidence confidentiality comparable to that of the traditional wired network the way uh, we are doing in the traditional wired network same thing we have to implement in the wireless network as well third point this web recognizable by its key of 10 or 26 hexadecimal digits that in other words we can say that 40 or 104 bits okay going in the next for the slides we will have a look into that the IEEE declared that both web 40 and web 104 have been deprecated the reason is uh, uh, when you will look into the wireless security protocols uh, this is somewhat weaker so they find a couple of flaws in this security protocol that's the reason they wanted to uh, develop something else so after that uh, WPA WPA2 so many protocols came into picture that's the reason it got deprecated okay hope we will look into more on this further okay so web was the only encryption protocol that was available for 802.11 a and b standards okay and after that uh, they came up with the wpa standard that was available for g devices so now we have to look the encryption details how this uh, web algorithm works basically this web use the stream cipher that is RC4 which is basically used for confidentiality okay well and the CRC32 checksum for integrity they are the two main features we have to remember RC4 used for confidentiality whereas CRC32 used for integrity okay. so here basically two types of keys we can use first one is we can call it as 64 bit and the second one is 128 bit so standard 64 bit web use a 40 bit key okay also known as web 40 in the same way uh, what we do here is uh, let's take the laser pointer here so that uh, I can show you how this is 40 bit in other words we can say that this is web 40 here we can see, you can see which is concatenated with a 24 bit initialization vector to form the rc4 key so basically the purpose of this rc4 algorithm how to do that i am going to show here so see initially as i told you there are two types of keys we are going to use first one is 64 bit and the next one is 128 bit so 64 bit first of all we, we will look 64 bit consists of two parts that is divided into 40 bit and 24 bit the 40 bit is nothing but the key which the user is going to share which user is going to enter okay and the remaining 24 bit that is called initialization vector in the similar way for 128 bit the web key is nothing but the 104 bit and 
the remaining 24 bit is the initialization vector okay it's very easy to remember 40 plus 24 104 plus 24 so which forms the rc4 key so this 64 bit web key is usually entered as a string of 10 hexadecimal characters so first of all you, you try to understand uh, we can enter in two ways one is in hexadecimal form and and uh, the another form is a sky form a s c i i okay first of all we will discuss in the hexadecimal form so for the hexadecimal form for 64 bit we have printed 10 hexadecimal digits and uh, 10 hexadecimal characters and it has to be from 0 to 9 and a to f apart from this it should not take anything else okay each characters represent 4 bits so 10 characters means 10 for the 40 here you can see the calculation 10 for the 40 plus the remaining 24 bits are initialization vector that stands for iv okay so 10 for the 40 plus 24 that is 64 bits web key so here you can say the example for example uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 that can be a password for 10 hexadecimal that is 64 bit okay in the similar way if you go for the s key one here we are entering the 10 hexadecimal digits but for s key it has to be 5 5 s key the reason is 1 s key characters take 8 bits of space so 8 5 is a 40 plus 24 bits of initialization vector so 40 plus 24 again it's 64 bits so it's very easy to remember easy easy to understand as well 10 characters of hexadecimal whereas five characters of s -card. okay well we'll move to the next slide in 128 bit what happens as we remember it has to use 104 bits of key plus 24 bits of initialization vector so how it it will be calculated so the way we entered 10 hexadecimal digits for uh, 64 bit here just we have to enter 26 hexadecimal characters for s -Kai, it has to be 13 s -Kai characters just half of this 26 hexadecimal characters here 13 s -Kai characters so 26 5 is a 104 plus 24 bits that is 128 bits of web key similarly 13 8 is a 104 plus 28 bits plus 20 sorry 24 bits of iv equal to 128 bits of web key i think you guys should get a clear picture how it is calculated okay okay ah uh, one more thing i would like to tell you here sky characters you can see in the keyboard uh, exclamation mark uh, at the rate uh, has dollar symbol percentile uh, star left colibras right colibras everything you can enter as a special character that is that will work for uh, sky characters okay so how this is calculated see so this is basic web encryption how this is calculated this is showed here this is initialization vector that is of 24 bit here key that is it may be 64 bit it may be 128 bit again in 64 bit it may be a hexadecimal one it may be a s type correct okay then when these are this initialization vector and key are mixed with each other there they form a rc4 using rc4 algorithm they will come up with the key stream okay then the text which we want to see that has to be xor then the cipher text will be look like this it has to be xor okay fine so basically there are two methods of authentication used in web the first one is open system authentication and the second one is shared key authentication 
in open system authentication what happens the client need not provide its credentials to the access point during authentication okay but whereas in the shared key authentication the web key is used for authentication so it will take place in a four step challenge response handshake process so now we will see the client sends an authentication request to the access point first step in the second step what happens access point will reply with a clear text challenge okay. in the third step the client has to encrypt the challenge text sent by ap hmm, using the configured web key and sends it back to back to ap again in another authentication request packet okay and finally the access point decrypts the response received by the station then it matches the challenge text the access point sends back a positive reply if it matches with the original text okay so well after the authentication and association the pre shared web key is also used for encrypting the data frames using rc4 okay well now we will find out what is the basic difference between web open and web shared authentication so in a first, at a first glance if we will see it might seem as the through shared key authentication it is more secure in comparison to the open system authentication but it is quite the reverse one in the shared key authentication part it's very easy to derive the key string used for the handshake by capturing the challenge frames in shared key authentication you can remember i told you in the earlier slide like there will be four uh, messages will be flowing in the second and third from there it's very easy to derive the challenge text key okay therefore data can be more easily intercepted and decrypted with the shared key authentication then with open system authentication that's the reason you should know that in comparison to open system authentication shared key authentication is quite advisable see here is a pictorial representation of difference between web open and web shared first of all we will look into web system open system authentication process this is the ap this is the client first what happens client will send authentication request then to that authentication request ap will response with authentication response then the association request then association response will happen then the data exchange will happen in the open system authentication whereas in the shared key authentication what will happen first of all client will send the authentication request packet try to understand the point here okay in turn access point will send with a clear text challenge in the authentication response frame itself clear text challenge that is a plain text you can say okay what it will do client will xor with the web key used and it will encrypt the data then it will send to the client what's uh, ap once again authentication request frame with web encrypted challenge then access point will decrypt the same packet it will compare with the text which it sent to the station before if it matches with that one then only it will success in the authentication response it will say that it got success otherwise it will make failure it's very easy to understand okay that's all from my side thanks a lot for watching my video if you like if it helpful for you anyway so please like it subscribe it and share it with your friends thanks a lot